we are uh, Doug Weir and Jake Baker, and just to give you guys um, uh, a little bit of uh, a little bit of background here, I am, uh, of course, my wife Amy and I are uh, are downline from Joe Mary Beth Markowitz, sponsored by Greg and Karen Charney. We live in the uh, Charlotte, North Carolina area. We are currently currently on our way to Crown Ambassador. We are currently Founders Diamonds. And um, I do like to throw this out because it kind of adds a little something to it. But we do run Ruby Volume 12 out of 12 outside of our diamond ship. So we're without a doubt going EDC and moving on to Crown Ambassador. I've got with me up here uh, Jake Baker from Raleigh, North Carolina. Jake and Jackie Baker. And I, I tell you, I cannot be more excited about being up here with a, with a guy right now because Jake Baker... Well, you know what I mean by that. Jake Baker is in his, you just finished your second month mm -hmm. of diamond qualification. That's right. So four months to go until yep. so he's a qualified diamond. Absolutely, uh, uh, Jake and Jackie's life is absolutely going to change. Uh, and uh, they're about ready to experience the joys of being a diamond on the Brit team. And what we're going to do here is we're going to um, just spend a little time together with you and, um, and share with you some things that we've observed as we've, as we've broken platinums, help people reach a platinum level in their business. You know, we could call this uh, secrets of going platinum. We could call this the uh, tips for being a platinum. We could call this um, an anything like little, little uh, thoughts about going platinum, I'd say. Little uh, secrets and tips and things that you can do to, uh, to make sure you're a platinum. And we're just going to kind of tag team a little bit. I'm going to let Jake, uh, because, you know, Jake's in the process of, uh, of breaking platinums and helping people go platinum right now for his diamond ship. And he's totally in the hunt. I've been talking to Jake quite a bit about the different uh, parts of the country that he's been traveling to. And uh, I'll just tell you, he is, uh, he's got it. He knows what he's looking for. He knows what he's teaching his, uh, his top leaders. And they are razor sharp, cutting edge, building the business as right as you can build it. And so, uh, Jake, why don't you go ahead and, uh, and kick things off a little bit. Tell these guys um, uh, you know, a little bit about what you guys have been doing and what you're looking for in a platinum. All right. Well, first off, let me ask you this. How many of, how many of you out there would like to go platinum and make an extra $1,000 this next year? Could you use that? Yeah, that'd be good. That would be good, wouldn't it? Well, uh, we're going to talk to you about some, some, some secrets, like Doug said. And I'll tell you the first secret is, is, is um, there, there is some nuggets. There are some secrets to going platinum. And I'll tell you what I believe one of the first ones is, is your appearance, the way you look. Uh, I got to tell you, the first meeting that I ever came to, you know, I had on a, my Harley Davidson T-shirt. I had my chain wallet and I had my knife on my belt. I had a knife in my boot. I had steel toed boots on. And, and I'm, what I'm trying to tell you, gang, is, you know what? The way you see that platinum on the board, that is an, that is an indicator of your appearance that you need to have. And by the way, um, I, I read this in a book, but I had facial hair when I first got in. I looked like Grizzly Adams. I really did. And um, I tried to scowl. And so I had facial hair, and, which wasn't really helpful when I was meeting people. Now, i got to tell you, and, and don't take this wrong, but I didn't have the old, uh, the, uh, the tongue ring. No, I never did that. Not because, uh, you know, I thought it would hurt, just I thought that was stupid. Okay? So I, I didn't have that. You know, can you imagine? Let me go talk to Bill Gates. Hey, Bill, how you doing? Hey, I got an internet business. I don't imagine your, your upline platinum has the old tongue deal going on. So the appearance and how you relate to people is very, very important for your platinum ship. And so I believe the look that you have is crucial. You know, Danny Snipes is, is famous for saying, how do you go diamond? How do you go platinum? You look like a platinum. You think like a platinum. You do the work of a platinum and you will be a platinum. So I believe the first one is is that you need to look like that platinum. Doug, you, any other nuggets in there? Well, you know, I um, when I was in when I was in college, and a lot of you guys have heard a little bit about my background, but I used to be I used to I used to love going to rock concerts and I used to be the black t-shirt and the blue jeans and the long hair and the and, and that was the people that I did you, I spent did you ever time have with. any pimples? I did have pimples, yeah. Did you really? Yeah, I sure did. I could wow. hang with the best of them. That's good stuff. And uh, I can do it. This is awesome. You know, I, I would have got my ear pierced because, you know, that was the cool thing to do, but I, my mom wouldn't let me, so I didn't. But I would have <laughs> if, if, if my mom would have let me do that. If I, would have, if, I, if I thought I would have been able to come home and visit the parents without them noticing a hole in my head, I would have, uh, I would have, come, I would have, I would have done it. So I, I chickened out on that. But, but, you know, what's interesting is when I, start, when I went to college, you know, I had the, I had the long hair and, and, and dressed like college kids did. 
But I was smart enough to know that when I wanted to interview for IBM, see, there's a time in college where, you know, your, your, final, ta- your final couple months in college, there's an interview process. And I just had a hunch that when I showed up for the interview with IBM, the company that I was, you know, going to get a job, I had a hunch that the guy that was doing the interview probably wouldn't have long hair, probably wouldn't wear, be wearing a black T-shirt, probably wouldn't have an earring. Got it. And I thought, you know, if I want to get a job, I'm going to need to make the best impression I possibly can on this person. And so, you know what I did? I started thinking, if I were an IBMer and I wanted to impress an IBMer, how should I dress? And you know what? I went out and got myself the white shirt and the red tie and the blue suit and the wingtip shoes because yeah. I heard that's, what I, that's how IBMers dressed. And ironically, or probably because of this, of course, through the interview process, I made a good impression and they saw me as being the type of person that they wanted to work with. And see, that's a, there's a tip right. for you. You want to become the type of person. Even it may, it may not be the way you like to be. You know, truthfully, I still prefer jeans and a t-shirt. And, and, and as a diamond, I wear jeans and a t-shirt all the time. But not when I, not when I was building my business to platinum. In fact, I kind of had a uniform, to be perfectly honest with you. I, I had yeah. a uniform. I never wore blue jeans. I never wore t-shirts because I always thought, even if I'm going to get my car washed or my oil changed in my car, I always thought I could be meeting the next Bill Britt. And do I want to be meeting, contacting the next Bill Britt looking like a college student? Or do I want to meet the next Bill Britt looking like a successful business owner who happens to be out getting his oil changed? And I, I just learned to always try to dress a step above and better than the people that you're around. You dress for success. You dress the way you want to be, the way you want to be known. It happened for me in college. It's no different in this business. Khakis and a polo shirt is how I went platinum when I was yeah. out and about. Yeah, I never, I never, uh, for over three years, years, gang, I never wore jeans after I got in this business. Now, I, I'm known for having 52 Harley Davidson t-shirts. I had one for every week because you don't need to change them more than that. Of not. You wear them inside so that's, out. Yeah. That's kind of what I wore when I first got in this business. And so uh, I called it my uniform also. I called it my zoot suit is what I used to tell Jackie. I'm going to put on my zoot, zoot suit and I would dr- actually dress like I saw my platinum dressing. And I've heard John Huffstetler say this, that you, you can't climb the ladder of success dressed in the costume of a clown. Ooh. And when he said that, I thought, he doesn't even know me. <laughs> How can he say that without even knowing me? But you know what? I'll tell you this. It has paid off mightily. And uh, I will tell you, uh, for you to go platinum and make that 50 grand that you guys want to. It will increase your self-image. It will increase how you think about yourself by the way you dress. And you will start to realize that, you know what? God is no respecter of persons. You're just as good as anybody else out there. So that is a, a major, major secret. Well, you know, and I just want to add one more thing without belaboring the point because I think these guys have got it. But, you know, it's, it's pretty tough to have credibility if you show up in an open meeting and you're just wearing a... a pair of slacks and an open collar shirt or maybe you've got one of these you know it's dressing up no doubt because you know casual fridays at your job you're allowed to wear the silk shirt you know with maybe a sport coat and the slacks but you know you lose a little credibility when you bring your prospect up to meet your upline platinum and all the leaders at your open meeting are wearing suits and and they and they look nice and they they're dressed like professionals their their hair is trimmed like a professional they 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 have a confidence of professionalism and yet you go up there and say hey i'm i'm one of the next platinums on the team and yet you don't even look like one of the next platinums on the team i just think you lose credibility and so just uh if i could you know a tip for being a platinum dress like one now do you have to spend a lot of money is there any place where you can go where you don't spend well, a lot of money? No, you don't necessarily have to. There's a couple places where, where I've got a lot of my clothes. One, Diamond, what is it, Diamond Clothers, I think it's Diamond called. Diamond Menswear, yeah. Diamond Menswear, yeah. You, which, uh, which you can uh, support your own, you know, the Brit team and, and get clothes that way. Um, I know that the uh, Store for More catalog and even, yep. uh, even through Quickstar with some of the, the partner, the partner stores, stores you, can, uh, you can very inexpensively look like a million bucks. I think the next nugget uh, is thinking like a platinum, thinking like a platinum. And I'll tell you, uh, for Jake, the the first nugget of that was um, just realizing that, you know what, I was part of a team. That, you know what, I wasn't an island unto myself. That that what I did actually either took away from the team every week or it added to to the team every week. And so, um, Mike, I knew that, you know what, me getting to the meeting early mattered. Me making sure that when I walked in that room, is the air right in the room? Do I need to tell my upline platinum maybe it's a little warm? Just being a, a, a support personnel helped out a lot. I just realizing that, you know what, I'm, well, I'm here. I'm going to sit my little honey buns down and I ain't got to think now. Understanding that, you know what, I was part of that team was crucial for me. And learning how to think like a team. 
and learning how to think like that platinum. So I think it was, it's very important for all of you out there to understand that, you know what, what you do every single week at, at your open meetings, in your house plans, wherever, what you do matters. And, and the thought process that you carry into these meetings is crucial. You know, the, the attitude of coming early and staying late, that's a leadership attitude. That is a, the attitude of a platinum. That you know what? You always come early and you always stay late. Yeah, and you know, we've heard this from Larry and Joe many, many times that you, when you stay late, yeah, you might lose a little bit of sleep. But it's not, it, you don't end up tired the next day because of the sleep you lost. You, just because you had to stay out late, you, you're tired because you had to get up early. Yeah, because you had to get up early for, what, was, what is it? The job deal. Yeah. It's the job deal that you get up early for. So you've got to change that thinking from hourly to become an entrepreneur. I remember when uh, you know, Greg, Greg and Karen Charney sponsored me, and I was in the Raleigh uh, open meeting there. And I remember the first couple times I went to the meeting, I was just in awe that I was going to Greg's meeting. I was going to Joe's meeting. I was going to this Brit meeting. And it wasn't until probably three or four weeks into, the, into my business that I started realizing, you know, this isn't Greg's meeting. This is my meeting. This is my business. And this is my arena to succeed. And so I started to take a, an interest. If, if I saw something wasn't right, I, I either attempted to fix it or I brought somebody's attention that, you know, the chairs aren't right or, you know, the air conditioning's not right. Or, you know, I, again, it was my meeting. And, and something just changed about the way I, I treated it once I took ownership of it as being mine. And that's when my business, where I could, Feel like I could bring people to my meeting, and I could be confident talking to prospects. They were coming to my meeting. I'm going to throw out a, a couple things here that go tag team right into what Doug was just saying. You know, there is a big difference between counseling and game planning. Um, what Doug's talking about is, you know, when you're a blessing to the team, when you're supporting this team, gang, I'm going to tell you that, that the system will actually build your business for you. Uh, but you have to have a game plan, and you have to learn how to counsel. And those are two so, totally different. Things And these are major secrets to going platinum. You know, game planning is sitting down and knowing what your goals are and, and getting with that mentor that has been there and done that and having that game plan written out with him and he, they know exactly what you're, what you're going to be doing that month. And, and along also with the ladies, knowing where you're going to be, what organizations you're working in, how you're going to be working those organizations. That, that is game planning. Counseling is more of a, a relationship side of the house. It's more, how's your life going? What's going on? And, you know, there's a, there's a difference between um, seeking a solution and then just going to your upline just to dump. You guys understand that? You know, your upline, your upline platinum, they're not just a trash can with a hairy lid, right? That you know what, they're there to help you, but you have to make sure that you're coming seeking a solution. Because, gang, if you'll come seeking a solution, listen, there's nothing that's happened in any of our lives that these people down here haven't overcome. All of us have gone through that. We've had to climb the same mountain. So it's very, very important that you understand counseling and then, and then game planning and having those goals. Right. Well, you know, Jake, I think uh, the saying that two heads are better than one really applies in this business. And having the opportunity to be able to go to somebody who has been further down the mm -hmm. road and can help you. You know, I've, I've learned this about the fastest growing. Uh, tell me about your platinums on your team. But I've noticed the guys that are going platinum on my team, they're calling me all the time. I mean, they, it's not like they're expecting me to think for them. You know, they're independent thinkers, but it's like they're independent thinkers within the game plan that we've, we've put together, together. And they're constantly running ideas by me. They're constantly communicating with me. So people that I, haven't, I don't hear from, but, you know, at the functions and every three, five weeks, you know, that kind of thing, those people never seem to be going platinum like the guy that's always got, Doug, let me, let me run something by you. Doug, let me tell you where I was last night. Doug, let me tell you where I'm going tonight. Doug, let me ask you, what do you think about me working here versus is working over here. Hey, Doug, you think we can maybe get a cup of coffee where I could run some things by you? Doug, when do you think we might be able to sit down? Those are the people. I've just noticed it. Maybe it, I, I really believe there's, a, there's, a, there's something that ties us together. I just noticed those are the people that are going platinum the fastest, the ones that don't make a move without communicating, that don't make a decision without checking up line first. They're, they're constantly in my back pocket. When I was, when I was going platinum, yeah, people, absolutely. I could call... I could call Joe Markowitz, or I could call anybody that knew me and my sponsor, and you could hardly tell the difference between me and my sponsor because we spent so much time talking on the phone or being together and, and counseling that we, I, started to, I started to talk like him. And people could, I've, I've called and his wife thought I was him calling on the phone because we, we just picked up so many of the characters. And what it was is we, we just, we communicated so much because we were building this thing together. I was in business for myself, but not by myself. 
You know, Doug's just hit on that, you know, how do you go platinum? You think like a platinum. And, you know, Bill Britt last night got, got Larry up here, and he got Mike Bundy up here, and he got Danny Snipes. And you know what he talked about? He talked about how he would do meetings, Tony, and then he'd turn around, and the meeting would be over, and there's, you know, there's the three musketeers, right? They were always there. And everybody else would head out, but those three were always there. And Larry Winters is famous for this. you got to think. You must think. And what Doug's saying is true. You've got to be tight and tight. But you know what? You've got to also think. There's a classic tape by Larry called, you know, don't be a vegetable. Okay? I'm going to give you another nugget. Hey, don't be a fruit either. Okay? All right? But you, you can't be a vegetable. You must learn to think inside of the game plan that your mentor and you have together. And, and Danny and Larry and Mike, you know what? They were always coming early and staying late and, and getting that thought process from Bill. And many times, you know, I saw it last night. And I want to mention this to you. Uh, last night, we get out of the night owl and it's uh, zero dark 30. It was pretty early, right? And we get out of there and there's Bob Bardo from Charlotte with about five, six guys hanging out waiting on Doug. And they, they just wanted to pull together and say, hey, Doug, hey, man, I know the night I was really good, man. Look, I'm going to be there next time. It, it was right there, you know, but the wife couldn't come, whatever. But they were wanting, they were seeking out that knowledge. And sometimes you've got to realize, gang, that, you know what? I used to chase Larry Winters around. Well, Jake, he's from Raleigh and you're from Raleigh. Yeah, but he didn't stay in just Raleigh. Many times he would be in Charlotte. Many times he would be in South Carolina. Many times he would be in Virginia. And you know what? I would actually go to get around my mentor, to get around that big team so that they could pull me. And, and, you know, Larry used to teach us, you know, you get in your car and you go somewhere, what happens? Something good always, always happens. So you got to learn to think inside of that. And these are some secrets, gang. We're not necessarily hitting the, the, the technique right now, but these are some secrets to you going platinum. This concludes Site 1. Work, associate, change your buying. I mean, it's, it's very planned out. But there's, there's still an element of, un, uh, of unknowns that you as an IBO have to figure out. You've got to figure out as an IBO how to make the business work for you. Because you don't have the same situation that Jake Baker had when he got started. You don't have the same situation Doug Weir had. Right. And so you may live in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. You may live in Atlanta, Georgia. You may live somewhere completely different than your upline. You may have a completely different family situation than your upline, a completely different job situation than your upline had. And so you can't just say, okay, well, I'm going to do exactly what I heard on tape. You've got to be able to start putting together how to overcome your issues and how to overcome your job situation and overcome the, the things that happen in your life. And you can't always wait. And this is the point I want to make. You can't always wait for your upline to come to you to make that happen. You know, I was, Larry Winters came to Charlotte and did an attitude session in Charlotte uh, about a month and a half ago, two months ago. You know what was awesome? Some of his top people, top people from as far away as Richmond, Virginia, up in the, up in the Baltimore area, came all the way to Charlotte. Now, why did they come to Charlotte? Did they come to Charlotte because that's their local attitude? It's their local team? No. They came to Charlotte because they're tied in. A guy named Sean Mills was down in Charlotte, North Carolina, because that man yeah. was in Charlotte, North Carolina. And Sean thought, hey, so what if it's a three-hour drive? So what if I roll in at four o'clock in the morning and lose a couple hours sleep? I might get one little nugget from Larry Winters that helps my family be free for the rest of their lives. Is it worth a three-hour drive for that? Is it worth seeking out your upline? Is it worth chasing those diamonds? Is it worth finding out the schedule of a guy who's in diamond qualification and getting around him? Absolutely, I believe. Yeah, no gang, um, and we're not going to beat this. This, this, is a, this is one that you know, Larry always talks about and Joe talks about that they don't really necessarily, uh, you know, they, they never wanted to hear, hey, you need to go get some new ones. Right? Don't take this wrong. Can I just hear from you? Let me ask you a question. Let me hear from you out there if you know you need to go get some new legs. Okay. But, but work, is, work is part of the, of the business, isn't it? And just like Doug was saying, it is mapped out for us. Okay, you do have the four habits that will create wealth in your life. But you know what? You still must get that structure. You've got to get the proper structure so you can identify the six. And, uh, you know, we, we've heard for eons, Bill Britt has taught for eons 12 to 15. 
For eons, he has taught that you, ha- you must have 12 to 15 so that you can have the nine growing, growing legs and identify the six. So there is a, a, a work to platinum as well. And I'm going to tell you, gang, you know how many nights a week it is? It's five and six nights a week. Five and six nights a week. That is your work ethic. That, that ought to be your badge. That was going to be my badge of honor. That you know what? You, nobody in my upline was going to be able to call me during what Joe calls prime time. And be able to find Jake Baker sitting at home. Uh, hey, hey, Jake, what are you doing tonight? Oh, uh, I had a, had a meeting canceled. So what are you doing? Yeah, just watching a little uh, Magnum P.I. or whatever. You know? It's been a while since you watch TV, hasn't it, Jake? <laughs> He's in diamond qualification. Maybe that's why. Last TV show I watched was Magnum P.I. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, could I... You go ahead and take it from there, Doug. <laughs> and off. I knew I could uh, get the ball back here in my court. <laughs> I was wondering Mar- when you going to let me talk. <laughs> Markowitz team. So that was good. Yeah, good. <laughs> well, you know, going platinum, the, the, the end all isn't platinum, guys. And that's what getting your structure is right is all about. It's... it's Going platinum on the way to ruby, which is setting yourself up for emerald, which is setting yourself up for diamond, which is laying the foundation for crown ambassador. And by getting you the proper structure with, you know, I don't know any proper platinums that didn't sponsor at least 12 to 15 people. Right. Because just, just to find the right people to work with. How many times have you got someone come to you and go, Jake, how do I get somebody to, I've got this guy, how do I get them to... How do I and just, motivate him? How do I, fill in the blank. It's always the same question, different words, but it's always the same question. And it always boils down to... They haven't gotten wide enough in the proper timing based on upline game planning and counseling to get the right chemistry, the right momentum, the right uh, uh, action going on in their team. And so I just wanted to throw out that 12 to 15 wide minimum in a burst of energy, the sooner the better, is going to get you at least three to four legs that you can work in, people that you can serve, people who will let you serve them. Yes. Uh, by the way, let me point this out. You know, w- 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 structure isn't just width. Prop, and there's the difference between structure, everybody has structure, your structure might be you. That's structure. So when you say, get structure, well, we all have structure. Some of us have better structure than others. Some people have proper structure. The goal is proper structure. And what's proper structure? Proper structure is setting yourself up for the next pin. That's what it is. Getting your, getting your group proper width, proper depth, proper thought process, proper pins, proper PV checks. And this is all based on counseling and game planning with an upline. So that you have yourself in a position to be able to move on. Yeah, one other thing I'm going to throw in there is, you know what, how important is it for you to get a board and easel, right? You know what, listen gang, you're brand new, you're just getting started, we're going to do some house plans for you, okay? We're going to take our board and easel and set it up in the house and register some IBOs for you. The scary thing is, is that you're going to think that those are the only IBOs you're going to need. And you know what, you're going to need to make sure you have a board and easel in the trunk of your car. At all times. You know, you're going to need some lit packs in there. You know, Fratacangeli, Steve Fratacangeli, I love listening to him. I love that peaceful phlegmatic. Because you know what? It's just totally opposite than me. But you know what? That's so cool that LaDawn Slocum got him on the board. She tricked him. Yeah, tricked him. Actually tricked him on the board. Hey, I'm coming, I'm coming. And then he'd talk her into coming one more time and registering another IBO or two IBOs. Hey, I'm coming. Hey, register another IBO. Oh, you need to do it. No, no, you need to come, LaDon. There's nobody like you. And then what, what did she do? Hey, I'm coming. He said, awesome, awesome. Then she called him at 7.15 and said, hey, I'm not coming. And you know what? The man had to step up to the plate, didn't he? So you're going to have to have a board and easel, gang. You're going to have to put that blue marker in your, in your hand. And I'm going to tell you, if you'll do it often enough, sniffing that glue in that blue marker, the, the, the little stuff. I don't know if you've tried that. Markowitz team doesn't do that. Markowitz like that. doesn't do that. Okay. <laughs> Is it free rain? <laughs> That's probably why we're reeling you in. <laughs> Board and easel's good. Yeah, Write a, that down. Too, too many markers that change your perception of things. Never, ne- never, um, never, never, never yeah. affected me. <laughs> hey, I heard this. I heard this pretty early on. Leaders don't rest in their sponsor's nests. Mm. Meaning, whose business is it? 
you know, there was early on in my business, I wanted to show my own plan. Now, I loved my upline wanting to serve me, and he was a lot better at showing the plan than I was. But you know what? This was my business. I was an independent business owner in business for myself, not by myself, but I wanted to show the plan. I got, I mean, I, I, not necessarily in front of a big audience, and I didn't see myself speaking in front of people. Don't misunderstand me. But I, I liked understanding it. I liked studying it, kind of figuring it out, and then going and talking to people about it. I liked going, even when they told me, don't go talk to people, I was still talking to people. I was going into work going, hey, what do you think about this? And I was drawing stuff out. Yeah. I didn't even know how it worked. But I was like, this is pretty cool. And when I started getting people where they were like, hey, that's something like that might work, I was like, Good stuff. I, it's like I took ownership yeah. of my business. It wasn't just going to meetings. It was doing meetings. And you know what, gang? You don't have to be perfect, and we're not going to belabor this because you know you need to get some new ones. But you know what? You just showing that plan doesn't have to be perfect. You've got to remember, Mike Bundy was just up here talking about Larry. He put six circles and put a hundred in them and said, you do a hundred, and then you have six that do a hundred, and then you make $22,000. Man, where do we, where, let's sign that up. Let's good. get rolling. So you don't have to show it perfect, but you do have to show it. Especially it since is, the it prospect doesn't know what you're showing. They've never Amen. seen it before. They Amen. don't know what's right and what's wrong. So whatever you tell them is, is what they know. And so make it good. Um, <laughs> it is good. So make it good, you know. Tell them the truth. But hey, here's something else too, talking about putting together your business team. You know, one of the things my sponsor did for me is, um, you know, I, I moved from Michigan. And so most of my friends, we went to college, we moved all over the country. We, we didn't all live in North Carolina when I made mm-hmm. my list of names. And one of the best things that my sponsor did is he, he took a weekend and he said, Doug, let's go on the road and let's go show the plan to some people that you know at a distance. And truthfully, I think that road trip is what locked me in to him and his wife as a, as a couple that I wanted to be friends with for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. And, and the power of what this team is. It was the best example. Of, I mean, you can't get a better example of someone taking their eyes off themselves and putting them on a downline and helping them. And we became best friends that, that trip. We sponsored my first person, which raised my belief. And I think if I'd have waited to get somebody that, you know... From, from Charlotte, North, or from Raleigh, North Carolina, where I used to live, I don't think I would have got off to as good of a start. And I just appreciate my sponsor taking the time to do that. And so don't be afraid to get on the road with your people. In fact, uh, I definitely think you ought to. Jake was just telling me, this is cool, I've got to tell you about this. Jake's telling me about a guy named Alan in Kentucky. I'm, but Jake's telling me this guy's got his own board and easel and is a showing the plan machine. Absolutely. Check this out. He's talking about ownership of your own business. He's shown the plan 55 times in the last 60 days. Not his upline. He has shown the plan 55 times. Alan? Yes. Uh, I'm absolutely. telling you, he's a uh, 4,000 eagle, I think, or yeah. soon to be. Yeah, just this guy, eagle, he's, not even, he's not even a soon to be 4,000 or eagle or even silver doing that. If he'll, he'll keep doing that. This guy will be up here as an emerald diamond and, and as far as he wants to go because he controls his future when he holds on to this thing right here. Amen. It's in his hands. Not in yours, not in mine, not in the Brit system. It's in his hands. Absolutely. You know, and we talked a lot about a lot of different aspects of being a, a platinum gang, but uh, a platinum, remember what a platinum is, it's six months at how much PV? 7500 So we can't, we can't discard the, the PV deal. You know, Larry always talks about if you have a million people in your, in your organization, is that good? Not if they don't do any points. Okay, there's a lack of belief there. So you must you must understand that you are the example to your organization of what a pra- proper platinum ship is. So even in, with the volume, that it's crucial that you understand uh, changing your house over. You understand making sure you do as much volume through your household as you can because you are an independent business owner, not the old invisible business owner. So you want to make sure that that volume is flowing through there and through those exclusives. So you want to make sure that you are the best example of changing your house over very, very quickly when you're getting your business started. Because when you register these people, the greatest thing you can do is bring them over to the house and say, look, this is the stuff I have access through uh, to through my own business. This is the stuff I've got through my own business. And this had points on it, and that had points on it, and that had points on it. You know what? All that stuff we buy at Walmart, none of it has points on it. Plus, demons land on you at Walmart, and your self-image goes down. <laughs> right? Is that true? That's a fact. Proven fact. It's in, it's in one of the books on the book it's in, list. It's in one of the books on the book list. Mm-hmm. We've got video to prove it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it happens. Well, you know, uh, our whole business is based on duplication. And so the best thing you can do is start making sure that what you want duplicated throughout your team, you're doing yourself. And you can't teach something that you're not doing. And I'll, I, I've got people on my team, and, and I don't see why it's such a, so hard for them to comprehend, but they can't figure out why their team 
doesn't believe in this business. They can't figure out why the people that they bring to meetings don't get in. And it's all because they don't believe. Or they, see, they say they believe. But the wife's using some other brand of cosmetics. You, you go to their house and you find brands that we don't carry through our business all scattered throughout their house. They, they come to meetings late, leave early. They just, it, it's, you can say one thing, but your people are watching what you do, not right. just listening to what you say. And you got to walk the walk while you talk the talk if you want to lead people. And that's maybe a leadership issue, but hey, this is spring leadership. You can't be a hypocrite and be successful in this business. If your mentality is, do I have to do 100 PV to get a bonus check? The answer is yes. Now, technically, your group has to do 100 PV for you to get a bonus check. But do you want to be a credible leader who's not a hypocrite, who's not there to take advantage of people? Or you, do you want to be somebody who is going to take advantage of people? And I think based on what you do, sets that for your team. I remember, I, I remember hearing 100% personal use. And I, I interpreted that to be the exclusive. Since we've got all these partner stores, I was going to have a hard time buying everything. Right. But, you know, everything that they offer. But I, I, I believe in the choices catalog, you know, the exclusive brands. I've always been taught, use everything in there. Because you can't even, even if you don't like it, you know, you can use it so you can at least tell your people that you've tried it and used it. And, you know, I didn't want someone to come to me and ask me about a product and I never tried it before. I remember being in an apartment and buying a product called Septic Tank AIDS, I think it was called. Something to aid the digestion of your septic tank. I don't know what it did. It, and I bought this product because it was in the catalog, but I... You lived in an apartment? I lived in an apartment, but I had the product. If someone came over and said, what's, you know, septic tank, I said, Drew, we use that. I wish I'd have known about that. I swear to God, I wish I'd have known about that. Because I, too, I bought stuff that, that I, you know, didn't really want to use. But it was part of the program, so I bought it. But I wish I'd have known about the septic tank eggs, because what I bought was the pantyhose. Man, those things ride up on you, you know they're, what I'm they're saying? They're bad. Yeah. But I got points for them, and I ain't got no job. Amen. Right? So volume is crucial. We're going to close it out by telling you this. This is the number one secret, gang. This is the number one secret. The secret is the Brit system. The secret is the Brit system. I've heard it said that if you'll turn your organization over to the Brit system, it will turn back to you a diamond ship. Now, granted, that's through six legs, but you must. You must learn how to promote and edify. And we're not going to have time to, to do this, but I will tell you there's an incredible, incredible tape. This is the most powerful business system in the world. And if you will plug into it at all cost. It will give you life and a life of more abundance. Well, and I also figured out that the Brit system was the key. And I had to, uh, if I was going to sponsor people, I had to have the books and tapes to get them started right. Lit packs. If you, if you open my trunk, if you open the trunk of a, of a platinum going diamond, you see in their starter books. You see in their extra starter tapes. You see in their lit packs. You see a, a board and easel. You see all the materials needed to get the job done. You get the materials before you do the job. And, that, and that's, that's one, of the, one of the keys, I think, is being prepared for growth. How many do you need? How many people do you plan on sponsoring? How big of a team do you plan on supporting? How big of a team do you want to educate? That should determine what you're prepared for. And uh, you're right, though. The Brit system will, uh, will take care of your people once you uh, get them plugged into that. So, gang, we're done. Um, I will just tell you this, that, the, that with the Brit system's help, with this team down front's help, if you will learn... To look like a platinum, if you'll learn to think like a platinum, if you'll learn to work like a platinum, if you'll learn to do volume like a platinum, what a difference a year makes. And I'm telling you what, gang, you know what? It only takes one year to change your life with this Brit system. You go after it with all your heart, and you learn how to become a platinum through this organization, and we'll see you at the top. Hey, God number bless. one thing platinums do, they don't quit. One thing every platinum has in common, without a doubt, is they didn't have a quitting mentality. God bless you guys. While the techniques and approaches suggested may have worked for others, no one can guarantee...